In a world where more and more people are believing that the Emperor is in fact wearing new clothes, we discuss topics new and old with a loose format that we try to keep to. However, we may go off on a tangent and occasionally we may digress. Welcome to Digressing Tangents. So, today on episode four of Digressing Tangents, we have with us Mark Sargent. As most of you know, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, also host of Strange World, and also the author of Empty Shelves and Flat Earth Clues, End of the World. Mark, how are you? I am well, and thank you very much for inviting me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, obviously, we have met in the past. Um, yeah. We met We met at Kidderminster at yeah. the Flat Earth Conference. Yeah. And that was 2019. Yeah. And I, I remember leaving that conference. Uh, there was, I think, myself, Paul from Paul on the Plane, you, yeah. Dave Murphy, were all in the car park kind of saying goodbye to each other. And there was a real yeah. sense of we can push this forward and things will be different from here on in i went yeah. straight home started booking uh, um venues for the scottish flat earth conference that was going to be held in 2020 <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then well what happened it all went horribly wrong oh it? <laughs> dude that that's nothing i got just crushed you probably heard this story already where i was um you know i had done philip and holly over there in, in yep. the world and then I come home and somebody calls me up and says, yeah, how would you like to come back over and do a, um, a McDonald's commercial for UK Pancake Day? And I said, right on, let's do that. And uh, the next thing you know, I mean, we, the passports were ready, everything was ready to go. And then the borders closed. And it's like, what? And so, yeah, so I've spent the last two years just railing against this whole thing. So I uh, know it was a bit of a shock and I, and I think do you think uh dave weiss has a point and we brought it on inadvertently I, I do i do i remember when he asked me that in uh summer of 2019 when uh when when he called me up and he said he said uh you know when when all the things were getting really really nutty well actually in 2020 he asked me that too but he uh he goes do you think we're we we may have caused this inadvertently i go sure why not i mean we opened up so many minds that uh if you were you know if you were going to start pulling the trigger you know start pulling all the levers for the great reset why not because it wasn't going to get any any better from our side you know we were just going to keep moving forward and growing and growing so yeah yeah okay. yeah no i like that and i think i think we are still growing it's funny that um that that banging of the drum of uh, flat earth is dead it's been debunked is suddenly gone quiet and i think there's more and more people coming especially i don't know i, th I think the lockdowns actually helped i think people were sat at home bored looking at stuff oh yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah let's have a look at this they, they definitely did because the uh, the netflix documentary <laughs> which had fallen down the charts because it had been in there so long uh came back up and it was back in the top 10 on on um on netflix and it's no. because more people, yeah, everyone was people. Well, you you know this. I mean, people have worn out their streaming streaming services. It's like, okay, what haven't we watched? You know, people are over here watching things that are, that are dubbed now in English. Every <laughs> once in a while, I mean, Americans hate doing that or watching things with subtitles. We do not do stuff like that. We are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's that's a good point. I think people did binge watch. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots of stuff, didn't they? And then started looking at obscure things. And again, oh, yeah. uh, and you made a valid point there, um, not wanting to belittle people's intelligence, but a lot yeah. of people turn on their Netflix or their Prime or whatever, and the first thing that's recommended or trending, if it, all you have to put the word trending in front of it, oh, what's that? That's trending. Click, yeah. I'll watch that. And then that forces the algorithm to trend it more because more people have clicked on it. Um, right. So whatever's trending is most likely to be the thing that people are watching or yep. maybe they're not watching it maybe they're just trying to force people into watching it but it's an yeah. interesting um i mean we've fallen and foul of algorithmic um integrity in the past haven't we uh, up oh, to the yeah point. yeah yeah i mean we the reason why you know people keep you know saying oh, are you, you angry about the uh, the youtube censorship stuff i'm going no because their algorithms promoted us for three years straight because YouTube was looking for their version of a binge-worthy topic. 
you know, because YouTube is the biggest television network in the world. I don't care what you say. I mean, yeah, a lot of their stuff is just crap and light and, and amateur, but they still produce lifetimes worth of content every month. And we, again, that that one programmer that was in the wonderful documentary, the um, the social dilemma, when he when he said, you know, out of the thousands and thousands of topics that were on YouTube, he said, if the average person that gets into flat Earth watches twenty videos in a row what do you think we're going to recommend? And that's when it fed on itself. So if you recommend something and people don't watch it very much, then, then no, you, you switch over to something else. The algorithm is like, oh, let's find something that people will stick with. And flat earth was definitely one of those things. I mean, people lost weekends and, and lost tons and tons of sleep, uh, including me, you know, you just get sucked down that rabbit hole and, and uh, you don't come out. That's a good point because I remember <clears throat> you'll you'll remember this. In fact, I've, I've got two things to ask if you can remember. But um, the first one was the guy that didn't have flat Earth as a record. He, he was trying to avoid it, and he right. did a rant about <laughs> how it kept on being recommended. And he says, yeah. "But I'm not interested. I'm sick of it." But that in itself caused the algorithms to yeah. Trip that. yeah he was feeding the algorithm on its own. About yeah, flat I remember Earth. that. I remember that guy. Because he showed up in in my in just as this obscure recommended list, and it was a guy. Every once in a while, people don't understand that in in YouTube, not only can you put stuff out there to say how to change the oil on your lawn tractor, but you can also put out questions. You can say, "Hey, how do I do this? Does anybody know how to do this?" And this guy put out this video saying, "Look, I don't want flat Earth videos." Rec he didn't. He wasn't an anti flat earther. He just said, "Look, for whatever reason." flat earth is being recommended to me for and he goes i have nothing to do with any, the conspiracy world at all so why is this being recommended to me can anyone turn this off because i can't seem to do it and he was so frustrated but in making that video he was he was promoting the algorithm as well which is awesome which is which leads me into something else really quick which was the um the professor dave slash simon dan on on your side thing where people say oh you know aren't you angry that those guys are around it's like no i wish there were a hundred more like it because every time they make a video, they promote flat earth inadvertently. Uh, it's, it's something I talked about years ago, which I said, look, it's almost, it's like firing wooden arrows into a bonfire from a distance. It looks like you're doing a lot of the stuff. A lot of stuff is happening, but really all you're doing is feeding the fire. So, you know, um, when professor Dave buys all those subs and, and hits and likes and all that other crap, all he's doing is promoting the YouTube or the flat earth algorithm. So, Hey, you know, he may be a complete jackass, Go at it. Have fun with it. You're you're doing nothing but helping us. You're working for us. Yeah, yeah. And that, that became apparent when he took on Dave, wasn't it? When Dave Wise, like, oh yeah. That, yeah, was, that uh, was the hardest thing to watch ever because the, for two reasons. One, and I'm not picking on, on the moderators from your side of the fence, um uh Atwood. Uh but the, they turned they turned their mics off. I mean the moderators just left. And whatever once, whatever every so many minutes would just could chime in. It's like okay, new topic, you know, new. Let's let's go down this thread. And watching a, a guy that you know claims himself to be you know a, a very solid professional uh, debater use the word stupid moron and idiot. I, I lost count uh, how many times. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a one hour span, it was it was embarrassing to watch. It was like wow, you know, the, any if anyone knows from debate in school. That's the last thing you is the, the thing you well, do not do, and it's he like, did it right out of the gate. So I, is, I'm I'm gonna butcher this, but is it Socrates or Aristotle that said um, when slander become is it slanders the oh I can, oh man oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know uh, it's when it's, the debate is lost, slander becomes the 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 tool of the enemy. I think. Oh it, yeah yeah yeah. When, yeah. It, there's there's a lot of variations of that, but when yeah. you in debate you do not personal attacks is your absolute last option and even then it's considered bad form it just is I mean, you know you could ask any high school debaters junior high debaters is like you know personal attacks like yeah you don't do that and he didn't even wait i mean he, literally two minutes out of the gate he's just now i know that i'm not defending him i know that part of it is it was so much pent up because he got so many flat earthers commenting on his videos that it was driving him insane. So he wasn't, it wasn't like he was just taking it out on David. He was taking it out on the entire flat earth community and David just happened to be sitting there. But it's like, look, man, is, is and, and the moderators should have known better. The moderators should have stepped in and, and said, oh, hey, you know, maybe you should tone down the, 
the personal attacks. But no, no, that's what the guy did. Yeah, whatever. I'm glad. And I turned down that that um, that debate. By the way, I I wasn't going to do it because he's a freaking troll. I had no idea how much of a troll he was though until David stepped in and and took the bullets for us. So kudos to David. Okay. Yeah, I was saying that Dave's a, a a steady hand on a rudder when it when it comes to debates because he's he's got it all down and he and he well, he doesn't bluster that easily. No, well, and the reason is there's a he, Dave's got a secret that a lot of people don't know. This is that uh, he has pe- he, ha- he has people that go out and solicit interviews for him. So they will go out and just hit all these different podcasts. So me, I get a lot of puff pieces. You know, people that that interview me generally want to talk to me. You know, they're generally interested in, interested in the flat earth. But when someone says, oh, yeah, hey, how would you like to talk about flat earth with this guy named Dave Weiss? There are people who be like, oh, oh, yeah. You know, they wind up on him because they they absolutely don't like flat earth. So it, David gets way more hostile interviews. So by the time he got to Professor Dave, it's like, what, calling, calling Dave Weiss an idiot? That's par for the course. You know, he's heard that many, 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 many times. That's, that's not new. <laughs> so, uh, I suppose, yeah. Thick, thick skin. Why, which is why, oh, yeah, so I'm watching Dave's face, you know, because it was all on video, and I'm watching him. He, it's like, yeah, it's not facing him. He knows this guy. No, what surprised me, here's what surprised me, was when they announced, what I, you know, because I, I picked it up immediately when it, when it came on, and they said, oh, yeah, by the way, we also have the biggest sub subscribe, you know, biggest YouTube channel ever in the history of this channel with 2 million subs, and it was like 1.9, but who cares? Let's round up. 2 yeah, million yeah. subs, which is Professor Dave, and I like turned from a dead stop going, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, who has 2 million subs? That guy? It's like, even Simon Dan, who, you know, I question his subs from time to time, even he only has 400,000. But this guy has 2 million subs, and then and you probably saw me mention this in the comment section, but the big yeah. giveaway was in the chat room, there were, I think we peaked out at about 950 people, which is a lot, right? It's a lot of yeah. people in the chat room. Out of those 950, at least 900 were us. It was yeah. just all flat earthers. So it's like, so, and I, look, I've, I've done, I've watched different live chats with different big channels. I mean, this guy, if you have 2 million subs, you have 5,000 people in chat and yeah. he, they could have spammed us out of the room. And they weren't there. So either one of two things happened. Either no one in that subbed him had any confidence in the debate, which I doubt, or all his subs were faked. You know, and that like harkens to the movie, um, the documentary which came out last year called Fake Famous, which yeah. I highly recommend. An American documentary about how everybody, everybody if under a certain age is just buying subs and hits and likes be, for social status. And every, you know, and everyone believe, which is weird. It's it's like you're buying them and you know, other people are buying them. But when you look at big channels, it's like you look at a million subs and you say, oh, it's got to be legit. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry, real quick. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but there was the, uh, the, the main line of seriously watch fake famous. There's this line in it where the guy goes, you really, and I'm not, I don't have Instagram. He goes, there are millions of people on Instagram with a hundred thousand or more subs. And, and you're going, what does that mean? It's like, well, there's less than 10,000 famous people in the world at any given time. How are there millions of people with 100,000 subs? It's because they're all paying for them. Uh, game, in-game currency has now transferred over to social media permanently. And that's yeah. what people are doing, including this professional troll channel. Sorry, I get fired up about that stuff. No, you're right. And again, when they can't form a, a, a cohesive argument or a counter argument, yeah. um, once they just to generate into name calling, you know they've lost the they've lost the plot. And, and so. to, to be fair to Simon Dan, uh, I mean I have never gone anywhere where a Professor Dave guy has come up to me and said, "Oh yeah, I, I, I don't like flat Earth." But I've been, you know, when I did street activism in uh, Belfast, yeah, I had yep. si- I had Simon Dan guys come up to me, and, and, and yes, yeah, you did, didn't you? And want to talk to me about stuff, and it's like, wow, really? I mean, he has he has he does have people out there and and that kind of it kind of goes into um if you look at his videos i mean his videos are averaging triple digits so you know he he, he legitimately puts on a better production but again he only has four hundred thousand subs which seems mostly legit anyway go ahead no, sorry no no that's fine no no well the, it was bound to happen we we're bound to talk about them <laughs> at some right. point right. um so anyway I, as you quite rightly pointed out you went off on a tangent which is part and parcel of the whole format of the 
the podcast is that you can go off on tangents and, and we'll see if we can rein ourselves back in and, and get back on topic. Now, yeah. I'm familiar with your story uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are listening are probably familiar with your story, but on the off chance that some people aren't, yeah. can you give me your red pill moment? When was it that you uh, suddenly realized? Pill, just in conspiracies in general, to know that, that people lie and people in authority you, about lie big things or just flat earth? You can give me both because I, okay. I know them both. So. Um, the, the, the big red pill moment for me when I was younger, again, I grew up on a very rural island um, just in the northwest corner of the United States right next to Canada. And I didn't believe that anyone lied about anything about ever it was like i was completely ignorance is bliss and i i was the epitome of that a big dumb blonde kid and then i saw jfk in the remember this is pre-internet so i saw jfk yeah. in the theater oliver stone's masterpiece in my opinion uh in the theater with a with a packed house absolute packed house and everyone it was one of the first movies i walked out where everyone was bitter they were angry because they realized he was done in such a way where it wasn't even questioned. You know, they sat through, you know, these, if you sit through this, you know, conditioning is very, very powerful if you're engaged. And people walked out of that thing absolutely believing it. And so that was that was my big early red pill moment. But the internet wouldn't be fired up for at least another six, seven years. and wouldn't even go high speed for another five, six years after that. So... Yeah. Um, and then with Flat Earth, it was, again, just conspiracy boredom in 2014. I had run, I had run out of things, rabbit holes to go down and said, okay, I'll you know, look at stuff. And it was a combination of Matt Boylan's video and a uh, channel out of Europe. I think it was called J. Henning Caligia, something or some weird name, or Cesar, one of, the, one of those two. And they were all... You know they were they were touching on little aspects of flat earth and that's when i got into the you know the the deep stuff but again it took a while i did not have my red pill moment until 2015 my official red pill moment where it's like because i had tried everything i could to resolve it and get the world back to normal and i couldn't do it and then it's yeah like, oh, okay here i go you know i'm gonna have to see what's and again but but that was my version of self the 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 help video which was you know it was asking for help it was like i wasn't making a video to preach to people people who made the flat earth clues i was making a video saying all right kind of like the guy that didn't want to have flat earth videos anymore it's like all right, yeah I, I can't do i i can't figure out how to solve this flat earth thing here's why and the, i made it went down a different track i said i believe in flat earth because this this is this so tell me how i botched this up how tell me how i screwed this up and no one could, no one would. And, and you know, so much positive reinforcement after that. The subject matter experts that came after me and, and said, yeah, it's not nuts. And yeah. Uh, it got more yeah. and more suffering. Yeah, because with for me with flat Earth as well, it was again 2015 when I, I started listening to the clues. Uh, when Patricia had um, flat Earth and other hot potatoes, and I'd listened to all that, and I think it was about a year after I started down that road. I actually did my first long distance observation because I happened to be on holiday, and I had a perfect setup for it. And I and I walked around the Isle of Arran to to a, a a point on the sort of the the north west of the island and looked down and was looking at a place called Loch Gilpead, which obviously shouldn't have been there. So I was a bit like, ah, it's not, it's, it's right then. It's true. Do you mean? So, and then after that, I did a few more observations and I hit a point where I'm, I'm kind of at that stage with, um, oh, I think of his name, the Taekwondo, not Taekwondo, the, um, Aikido guy. No, nope, oh, no, no, no. Um, who uh, can't word? No, no, no. He's um, tenth planet um, jujitsu. You know who I mean. Um, I, I can picture his face, and I've lot of completely yeah, blanked right. on his if name. You if you remember it later, let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he he's at that stage where he's like, I'm I'm giving up trying to convince people. You know, if, if you if you don't know by now, you, you're beyond help. So. Right. It, it's like, you know, I, I if someone asks me, I tell them I I, I do a bit on, on Twitter, do a bit of an Instagram. I've obviously started a, a new podcast. I'll talk about it, but I don't actively go looking to do flat smacking or, or rile any feathers by telling people their world's a big lie. So yeah, but there yeah. So that that's I think that I don't know, obviously you're still 
very much. And I was going to, I was going to introduce you as the co-host of Strange World as well, because uh, uh, obviously it's Karen B's show. But right, that's so obviously I, I Karen thought, B's show. Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd better of it. So, yeah. going back to the, your JFK moment, then, yeah, would you, would you, would, would that be your blue pill if you could take the blue pill and just go back to a point in time yeah. where you oblivious yeah, if to I had to the, go back and do it over again JFK would um would be the blue pill but I don't know if I would take it because I mean again ignorance is bliss so like the 80s JFK was early early 90s so um the 80s for me were just was just a wonderful time because uh there there was nothing you know I didn't didn't see any of that you know, when, when you don't see, when you don't, when you believe that everything is awesome and everything is, is, uh, you know, nobody lies about anything. No people, power doesn't corrupt and, and the, all the, the evil stuff of the world. I mean, eighties was just bright colors and bright music and happy, upbeat stuff. But if you didn't, I mean, and nothing really happened during the eighties, you know, as far as, as that. So I wouldn't want to be blindsided if, you know, something bad did happen, but yes, if that was the, the, the blue pill moment, you know, if I had to go back, that would be, that would be it because things did change for me after that. Then I finally, I believed in, I said, oh, so people can lie. That was my introduction to it. You know, it was one thing was like, like I watched, I remember watching Oliver, another one of Oliver Stone's movies, um, Platoon from the mid 80s. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. But that's different. I mean, you know, that's, that's war. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, we paint war in a certain way and we, we try to hide the ugliness of, you know, the, the American colonization or whatever wars we're doing. Um, we, you know, the Americans always try to paint themselves as the good guys. And I understood that what JFK did though, was uh, let me understand what lengths people in power were willing to go to, you know, to accomplish their agenda. And, and it, it, it stuck with me for a while to where I was one of the few people, if not the only person that ever said that JFK was inevitable because he stole well one you know with the, the the power of his family he ups he up upended the narrative a little bit because he stole the election from a young richard nixon and yeah. two he was going to be you know I, i've told people like look he was a long-term problem you know people say oh you know jfk was a tragedy he was awful it's like no 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 if you're the if you're the authority if you're the world order he's a pain in the ass and because people forget that you know he died in 63 um he was going to get reelected in 64 and yep. that would take him to 68. And then Bobby Kennedy, his brother, who was attorney general, he was going to take over. He was going to run from 68 to 72 and 72 from 76. And at that point, the, the love affair with the Kennedys would have continued on to where maybe even Ted Kennedy and all his sins maybe would have even been forgotten, you know, or forgiven. And then he would have been, you know, we're talking bare minimum, though. Kennedys for 16 years? No, no, it wasn't. They weren't going to let that happen. And so, you know, JFK was taken out. And Robert, Bobby, was he was given a warning. He, that that was his warning. You know, it was like, look, you know, your brother, you know, we, he was a, he was a lesson. You know, he was a, a a point we had to make. It's like, don't you even think about running for president? And the second he even thought about, it, it's like, he, they weren't even going to make it to the primaries. And that was it for him. And yeah. uh, so again, and so I get it. I was I I've always prided myself on looking at conspiracies in a slightly different light, where I. A lot of people, you know, they, they're stuck into the, you know, it's always dark and sinister and awful. It's like, no, no, no. For me, you understand, you have to understand why it's being done. Most of the time it's being done for what they consider to be the greater good. Now, you may disagree with that, but that's what always qualified a conspiracy for me. So anyway, that, sorry, long story short, that's the what JFK started for me was this analyzing and overanalyzing and analyze you know some more so when when like when 9 11 came around you know i dug into that yeah I, I mean that that's a nice segue into um your black pill then so what in your opinion is the worst case scenario what's the black pill what's the the doom and gloom in your oh oh um well it's gotta be the great it's, it's, it's the black pill is the great reset um, no question. I mean, it is the, um, which is how it's, which is how it's unfolding now. That is the black pill, which the great reset for those people who don't know, uh, who may have not known, who may be listening, um, is the, is the conspiracy doomsday scenario, which is the, the Georgia Guidestones, which is weird that they would be in Georgia out of all the places. I'd think they'd be in Europe somewhere, but, but they're in Georgia. 
and where the Georgia Guidestones, the number one thing says that the population of the world, if you're going to do this again, if you're going to reset the world, keep the population under um, 500 million, which is a problem because, you know, before this whole pandemic thing started, uh, we were pushing 8 billion. And which means a lot of people have to go. So the, the doomsday scenario would be, well, you, right now, it looks like, you know, you hand it out. I, well, I think it's like 11 billion doses of something we can't talk about. And yeah. then um, 11 billion doses and then follow that up with some sort of uh, escalating world war, which appears to be that now you could you could go down the road of oh you know some natural catastrophe and that, that may still be in the books but world wars are far more efficient at or you know orchestrating you know how things get get torn down and that would be the black pill which is from what i can tell right now going along just swimming do talking of natural disasters do you think i mean i'm, I'm sure they're capable of it but yeah. Do you think that's a viable scenario where they cause some kind of, um, air quotes, natural disaster in Russia, and then America rushes to, you know, a Russia's, America rushes to Russia's aid, you know, and, and becomes the big hero, like, right? you know, oh, we'll give you this aid, blah, blah, you know? Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think so, because Russia appears to be the one country that is not for whatever reason. And of course we don't know what happens at those, at the, at the high, high levels of power. Uh, I like to call them the, the, the world order. Right. You know, and of yeah. course it, it's, it's any combination of groups. We, nobody knows who's at the top, you know, is it the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the council of foreign relations, the, the um, trilateral commission it goes on and on and on. No, nobody knows who's on top, which is exactly the point. Uh, uh, power. The first rule of power is to stay hidden. But Russia, for whatever reason, has been – it's not that they've been independent and freewheeling, you know, like the United States. The United States was their own problem. But Russia was always self-sufficient. They're huge. You know, it's a massive, massive land uh, land area. They have like nine time zones, right? Just contiguous it's not nine time zones. And all these different resources and all this, they don't need anybody else. And they work hard and they do their own thing and they're not flashy. They just get stuff done, right? They're like yeah. the blue collar of powers out there, right? They're just the, and so I don't think they've been going along with the plan. So the only, what's, what has to happen now is some sort of massive um, false flag, which we're, of course we're not supposed to officially talk about in reference to something else. But you have to you have to stage something because Russia's not going for it. I mean, the Americans, let's call it what it is. I mean, if you've been following the news, the Americans blew up that ship, <laughs> took out yeah. their destroyer. It wasn't the Ukrainians. It was the Americans. I don't even know yeah. if the Ukrainians even pushed the button. Yeah, it may have been fired from Ukrainian airspace, but that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. And, I, sorry, sorry I'll just, just interrupt there slightly because – it, was it two, three weeks ago that like your news, like CNN and Fox, were act actively saying that Russia might pull off a false flag in an effort to escalate the war? So they actually advertised the whole false flag narrative. Yes, you know? that, and that is and, true. And then However, the, the sorry, I was going to say, and the correlation with the with the, with boats being hit back to platoon and the Gulf of Tonkin, which ultimately caused the deaths of millions of people which was right. then admitted to be a false flag oh yeah 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 absolutely and but the thing with the russians and yes it, they could, could have blown up their own ship i mean it was built in 1979 it wasn't exactly state-of-the-art although it was retrofitted but the thing was they didn't what they didn't do was they didn't blame the americans which I thought it was interesting is yes, could they have used that as a false flag to wipe out more of more of Ukraine? Possibly, but they were going into Mariupol anyway. What I think was interesting was they didn't blame the Americans at all. I mean, not even at all. And and so we've been sort of in kind of like the the petroleum factory that got wiped out in Russia, right? <laughs> in like, yeah. Russia, you know, it's like that that was also us you know there's there's things that are happening right now it's called war by proxy and russia and the americans are both doing it because they know that the media can't report on it because what's happening is officially not happening you know like all our green berets and in, you know your guys are down there too the sas oh, oh, yeah the, the special advisors yeah yeah they're down there too and a lot of them got wiped out you know during the, in those training training things and the and the weapons 
um, staging areas. So they, they had to all the survivors had to be moved back to Poland. Um, we're go, we're going back and forth. Anyway, the, the point is is that Russia is not going for it. They're not the 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 world the world order. We're going back into the into the um, uh, the black pill scenario. The world order wants the big showdown. They want the big fight that we've been talking about for 30, 40 years now. They want the, the, the big showdown, but Russia's not going for it, so they may have to coax this along. And the best, my best guess right now would be Finland, which is, yeah. as you know, if you, if people listening, I know you don't know your geography, and it's okay. I have to look up stuff too. Which is Finland. The problem with Finland, so Finland says, oh, we, we're going to join NATO, right? But they've been trying to join NATO for 30 years. No one's ever gone for it. But now, apparently, it's going to happen, like, soon, very, very soon. And Russia's going, yeah, that's not happening. Do you yeah. even think about doing this? Because Finland shares an 800-plus mile border with, with Russia. And Russia doesn't yep. is not going to do this. It's like, no, we, we didn't let it happen with Ukraine. We're not going to let it happen with Putin with finland and finland will be way worse they've only got twenty thousand troops if that they can russia can just go in and do whatever they want in finland and but the thing is that might that might actually provoke more you know into you know turn into the uh, i would have to check but i do believe finland still has national service and i think every like fighting age individual is is trained and equipped yes they have two hundred thousand so, in reserves no yes. question but but, I'm not saying they're a match for a regular army, but I'm saying yeah. that's a lot of people that s could suddenly jump up. And then flipping, say, people who don't know the geography. Now, I know Turkey doesn't have a border with Russia. However, Turkey is not to be overlooked. I mean, they're very quiet at the moment, right. but it wouldn't take them long to roll into uh, Syria. Right. You know, uh, and they've got a massive uh, land army turkey they're very underestimated in their whole military thing because they're very quiet they don't make a big song and dance about it but they wouldn't take long to push up through and be at russia's kind of southern border or even in the the south ukraine like uh, I, I can't remember the two countries in between but it's not a big distance you know if they suddenly decided to go for it oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it we're we are on the precipice on multiple fronts here it's not going to take much i mean heck our our media over here is is we've got like a form former russian advisor saying if this thing goes you know into atomic weapons this is probably how it'll play out i mean we've been we've been pushing that narrative quite steadily now that drumbeat which is like oh it could happen it could happen it could happen and so yes it absolutely but 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 russia's not taking the early bait so they're gonna they're gonna have, they're trying everything now just to, to force their their hand. Now you think, oh, okay, why don't you do an obvious obvious false flag? Well, you have to make the narrative somewhat make sense. So, yeah. like like Master Gunner was telling me, you know, behind the scenes, he's going, you got to make it at least seem remotely possible. Uh, otherwise, it'll turn into the whole Last Jedi plot where there's just huge holes everywhere and nothing, <laughs> nothing makes sense. It's true. I, mean, I I stopped watching Star Wars because of that stupid movie. It was like, what the hell? You guys aren't even trying. Um, yeah. We, what do you think the plot line will be? And then suddenly Gorbachev appeared. To me. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Just suddenly the appears back. The ghost of Lenin shows the up. The ghost of Lenin. But, but no, Russia Russia has to play their part in this. And of course, don't forget, there's also China. The, the, other, the flip side of that is yeah. the, the Chinese side, where China can roll into Taiwan anytime they want and that's a whole different animal because there's no nato happening over there and let's face it taiwan is china's right? the, the only reason they haven't done anything is because taiwan makes a lot of crap for us you know a lot of physical good goods and we have we put a bunch of military things over there but they could roll into taiwan anytime they they want then what happens then the whole thing goes sideways and so yeah that's the black my ultimate black pill would be russia and china and america in a three-way just mess i mean you might as well just start handing out red horse t-shirts at that point because it's just going to turn into a, it'd be amazing to, to watch it, well it wouldn't be boring that'd be for, no, for certain. It would not that would be ratings bonanza absolute ratings bonanza so uh, but that 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 is the ultimate black pill for me right now i mean that's the way it's going i mean beforehand before that happened to be it was a dealer's choice do you ever watch um uh, cat the cabin in the woods the the horror movie oh, yeah 
yeah, the, the deconstruction horror movie, the last horror movie anyone should ever watch is that movie. That's basically before be, when they went downstairs and they were, it's like, okay, what is the, the, the scenario that's going to happen? They had to pick one, right? Before the, the, the war thing started happening here and people were just, we were all over the place. Okay. Is it going to be a super volcano? Is it going to be a fake tsunami? Is it going to be project blue beam, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out now it looks like it's going to be the, the, the red horse, China, Russia, America, big throwdown in the middle of the street. Which has been very subtly and, and not so subtly pre-programmed since, the, where would we go back to, the original Red Dawn? Oh, yeah, or the before original that? Red Dawn from the early 80s. Oh, yeah, that one of the finest pieces of American propaganda ever. And the critics hated it. And everybody in the 80s watched it. Everybody watched that movie uh and it got great you know it's rerun all the time and uh you know they even remade it with chris hemsworth with a north korea china tie-in where they yeah. seattle instead of colorado i thought the colorado i mean when you open up a movie with russian paratroopers shooting up an american high school in colorado that is just propaganda gold right yeah <laughs> it's just i mean that's the first five minutes of the movie i mean they're, they're the first class of the day everyone just sitting down they're all sleepy paratroopers landing right outside the window just machine gunning i think there was the teacher the first one to go down <laughs> it's like what yeah and I, I bet people in the cinemas where their blood was boiling and they you know, they probably oh, ran out. Oh, it was. Extra well, what, what, more every, everyone was, yeah, well, yeah, everybody had their own um, uh, ideas. Okay, what are we going to do, man? What happens? I mean, my friend and I, we watched it in the theater. And we, um, you know, of course, we had to watch it in the theater because there's no one else watching. And uh, we were thinking, you know, because we're so close to Canada, it's like, yeah, man, we're going to get a boat. And we're going to fill it full of stuff. And we're going to head. Because actually, it was fairly realistic. We could actually make it to Canada. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't be that wouldn't that be far we wouldn't have to cross like the english channel or anything so no no you're not that far from the canadian border are you really no no i mean i i lived in um you can see canada from right up right up the road here just go out to the beach and look up the road and there it is um uh the the mythical city of um, victoria which is, is it, uh and that is, but that only appears every 500 years like brigadoon though is that <laughs> is it the, you're not familiar with the film Brigadoon, no? This is like the mythical uh, oh, village that oh, appears. Wow, in one of those deals. No, 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 no. No, I, well, you know what's really funny <laughs> is I didn't. Ameri most Americans don't know. We don't know anything about anything. We um we don't. You know, Canada's right above us, but um, and no, everyone thinks that that when you go west, Canada stops at Vancouver. That's it, and then it's yeah. like there's no more Canada. It's like no, no, no. There's a whole nother landmass with with. A royal city called Victoria, and yeah. it's it's beautiful. And um, I lived there that, for a year with another flat Earth uh, woman. It was, it was fantastic. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm I'm familiar. Um, it's very similar to the UK. There's a lot of people think Scotland ends at Glasgow and Edinburgh, and there's still another few hundred miles north of that, all the way up to John O'Groats. Yeah, you know, uh, and that's just and again, that's people in and we're we're a fairly small country, and, and yeah. some people don't realize just how. Uh, relatively big we are in comparison to you know oh no the, England, like the new a really big place i was so i fell in love with england when i when i got to do the whole conference thing because you know i i flew i i hit so many different airports in england and it yeah, was yeah, she did, didn't it? yeah. it was it was fantastic and then uh i didn't get to do scotland um and then uh i i came back for the Philip and Holly show and, you know, got to, got to do some, a couple more things. And it was, it was awesome. I, I love England. And, and I've been, you know, again, because I've been watching so much stuff on Netflix, uh, been, you know, catching up on, on the histories. It watched, watched all the seasons of uh, the lost kingdom, you know, the, the Danes and the Saxons. Oh yeah. Yeah. That well, whole thing. When, when I was trying to organize your flights for the conference, yeah. and you, you, were, you, you had a contact in British Airways, you said you were going to tap up, but obviously that all fell down. But yeah. um, I was living not too far from Lindisfarne, which is um, what one of the, it's famous for the Vikings raiding and, and killing all the monks on, right. it, sometimes referred to as Holy Island. Um, and nearly every Viking, like the, the Netflix, is it Netflix Vikings or is that Prime? But Oh, uh, no, I think it's, 
Oh, oh, no, I think but, it's Prime for Vikings. Yeah, the, the TV series Vikings, that's, yeah. that is actually depicted in the first season where they actually land at Holy Island. It's where they take the monk from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I watched, I, I did watch the first season. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that was, based on true events, yeah. Oh, that oh, and I say wild. Trump. It's like, can you imagine coming in from another country? You know, those, you know, the <laughs> barbarians, they landing. It's like, oh, look, people, let's kill them. <laughs> <laughs> You've got stuff I want. I'm having it. So, yeah. 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 So, no, you, yeah. If you'd had, uh, if you had have made it, we had a an itinerary for you because we were obviously, we were going to do, uh, obviously, the Berwickshire coastline. But um, I was also not that far from Roslyn Chapel as well. And I thought that would have been a nice day trip out for a. Uh, so uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's wonderful. I know I'm a, I'm a huge huge fan of England, and uh, the thing I've appreciated more and more over I don't know over the last five ten years is, uh, you know, different different countries are are good at certain things, and I've realized now that the crown, not just English England, but the crown, uh, the the crown has the best actors in the world. Period. Uh, they you know you you look at them and I, and I I've so appreciated the fact that the the English you know uh, thespians uh, when they they figured out they all whispered to each other it's like all you have to do is learn an American accent you can work in America and do about anything you want oh yeah because and, and they did there's so many actors that come over here we don't even know they're British until they show up at like Comic Con or something yeah. mentioned and they're talking it's like what? is it Hugh Laurie did that didn't he hugh laurie when he did house um, yep. the amount of people thought he was american and then when they found yeah. out he was english they were they were gobsmacked tons of people i mean tons of people like part of the cast of um of uh, oh going on you know like true blood you know guy again these people would show up at conventions and they wouldn't go into their american accent they just start talking it's like what um and of course you know people like uh you know christian bale who you know lived in both sections or yeah. uh uh oh who's the guy from torchwood um which oh you mean um david tennant no 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 torchwood no. not doctor who um uh, uh the guy oh captain, captain uh oh Jack yes Mark yes um, Jack Marcus, um john barrowman Joey barrowman yes yeah. you know, he he lived in both places as well and so he could do absolutely perfect flawless but i think those were the guys that taught you know bought people was like look all you have to do is learn some american accent you know want some region and you're fine you're great and uh, and it works yeah so it's it's wonderful yeah that's right because john Barman, he's from i think he's originally from glasgow or, or edinburgh he's, he's from this neck of the woods yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think he's too and yeah uh, yeah he, he was I'm, great. I'm, sorry i've just remembered it's, it's eddie bravo who i couldn't remember <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Bravo, the 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 world uh, judo, you know, judo. Take, no, I keep I keep I've got taekwondo in my head, but it's not. It's um the other martial arts, the uh, jujitsu. That's what he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, I was right. wrapping up it, like his face. You know, when you get someone's face in your head, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't remember his name. Um, right. So, on a lighter note, then, Mark, um, yeah. white pill. Oh, and, and, case scenario, and, and, if I had to make a wish tomorrow and, and diffuse the black pill, uh, some sort of ancient civilization intervention, meaning big, silvery, shiny ships show up over a bunch of major cities and call the whole thing off and and say all right now of course there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't trust them but honestly what do you got to lose at this point uh you know because there's all we've touched on those with different shows like you know we, i think we ruined part of that with the the, the television series which was remade v yeah uh, yeah which was initially done in the 80s and then we redid later um but that's yeah for me that'd be the the white pill scenario where some sort of ancient civilization comes in and says okay here's the deal and by that I mean they would reveal, also reveal at some stage, because why not, uh, what the world really is, which is so okay coming coming from the Iron Republic from the other side of the ice wall. That kind there of there you go. Might as well, yeah, sure, sure. Iron Iron Republic is a good choice. And and say uh, okay, the world is not what you think it is. We're actually running things, and it's time to you know wrap wrap this show up and and uh, start over. And where, whatever that means, I don't, you know, something not sinister. Because I honestly do believe that's what happens anyway, eventually, regardless of how the, the world order, and even if a black pill does happen. Because we all know that there have been previous civilizations before ours. We're not the first people to do this. 
Um, Definitely. Obviously, you're familiar with Fingerprint of the Gods, Graham Hancock. That, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, would you do you think then is it possible that and I'll again air quotes the elites or the people in control actually are aware of and how resets happen, and therefore preempt like you know it's like having a survival bag they they shove a, a go bag full of important stuff you know books texts whatever batteries and then the big reset happens and the first people out the gate that can control you know power money and, and get a system up and running suddenly have a foothold and people fall in line i don't think i believe in a in a certain set of rules that balance things out so if you were running this world you wouldn't want to give the people you want to wouldn't want to give the people the advantage a continuous advantage forever so right. it, so now they could prep now would they now, and the, the flip side of that also would be so let's say you're part of the world order now you know full well that there have been issue you know there have been changes before you know that we've had resets but you don't know when because you know it's carbon dating systems completely worthless so you don't know when they happened you don't know what happened you don't know who survived now you may have interaction with some of the older civilizations but you don't know if you even completely can completely trust them so you can prep all you want but I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan that you, you know, that the evil people or the the people with the greater good thing are just going to continue on and, and doing things. I mean, a reset is called a reset for a reason. So it's like everyone, you know, you go with what you're wearing, and you know, we'll we'll put you somewhere, and and uh, you can you can, you know, you're you're not the hierarchy would get wiped out. It's sort of like um a, a quick little story when I was a freshman. During my the, the so in my ninth grade year, I don't know what you call it over there. My ninth grade year, there was a brand new school that was built miles down the road, and so during the Christmas break, we all left our um you know the the old school which had been there forever you know since the yeah. 30s, and we had to go to this new school, and th when we got there the hierarchies just evaporated because it was a brand new school and everyone kind of walked around in this daze. It's like, you know, the, the clicks were gone for a while and everyone was just kind of trying to feel their way around and and sort of fit into the new place. So that's why I kind of feel. So, no, I don't. I don't yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I can see that. It, yeah. No, I can understand that. It's just me, though. I mean, that's that again. You want the white pill. That's that's why. Because because otherwise you're talking about, you know, potentially the um, what you don't want to happen would be, let's say the um, oh, the, uh, the 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 time machine movie. The one with Guy Pierce, if you remember that one, where he cranks up the dial and goes billion a billion years in the future, and nothing got any better. In fact, it even just got worse. To where you know the the slavery, you know the the class system never got any better, and so he you know he went back and to try to change just a little part of it, even though he wasn't going to be able to change the whole world. So is, is that was that not just called Time Machine? Not yeah. am, am I thinking of the? No, no, it was, it was called Time Machine. Yeah. It was, that's the one... it was a remake of the 60s version, but Guy Pierce was the lead in this one. Yeah, and that's the one where he he he, he goes forward in time and the moon's been blown up, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, the, the, the moon caused some awful stuff, but then he cra he realizes the, the two-class system 500,000 years in the future was, was, was there, and then he cranked it up even further to see, it's like, does this get any better? And it didn't. So what yeah. I, so I I don't believe in that. I believe that a, a reset is a reset, which is all right. We're going to start over again. Well, think about this. I mean, you know, yes, there's you know the the sunken cities off Japan and and India and the Puma Punku and Bosnian pyramids and all that stuff. But the civilizations that ran them are gone. They are not here anymore. Now, are they moved off somewhere else? Sure, but they're not here. That's a good point. Mm. Yeah, because big civil. I mean. The, the, I mean, because the Aztecs just seem to disappear, didn't they? Yes. Oh, them, them as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, whoever's ever, whoever is running this place, when they do, you know, they do a little terraforming, but they definitely, you know, tweak the civilizations. And, you know, no different than we do, you know, in our our sandboxes. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Because, again, one of your old analogies used to be the box of kittens wasn't it are we a box of kittens or, or are we a box, box of scorpions, scorpions? Yeah. yeah 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 
So yeah, I, and, I, honestly, I, and honestly, really, come on, you you won't want to let us the the civilization we have now <laughs> is, is is wonderful for creative angst. We we have amazing creative abilities based on strife, but wow, you don't want to let us. I mean, come on, even our own movies. Even our own movies, the, the day the earth stood still, which is goes all the way back to what the fifties. Yeah, they yep. said straight up, it's like, yeah, Earthlings can never leave here. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way. Just We're like, just... Oh well, and wreck everything. Absolutely, I I, I agree with you because sadly, the the people with the, the with the money and the and the information and the technology, as soon as you come up with any idea, they say, you know, how can we weaponize it? Right. That, that that's their go to yeah, think think about this. And you if you've listened to my stuff, you you know this, which is if we um we you know the all the, the future was robbed from us from a lot of stuff, you know, the Jetsons and, and all the, the futuristic day of tomorrow, you know, has yeah. ne- land of tomorrow has never happened. You know, we don't have flying cars, we don't have robot servants, we don't have teleportation, we don't have any of that crap. But what the things we got really, really good at is anything that has to do with war. We yep. took that to levels that would, I mean, you could show stuff, you know, even to, to people, to groups a hundred years ago, what we have now. And they just stare at you and be like, what did you do? Because <laughs> yes, that's the first thing. Well, one, there's, there's money to be made in war, huge profit margins in war always has been, always will be, but also because this world is, is driven off greed and money and power. And the, the, there's a line from JFK and that is, the the ability you know the the power of any country lies in their ability to make war so yeah you always have to be refining that constantly if, if you're if you want to stay in the game yeah i mean before we wrap up i remember because I, I was a weapons technician in the air force for 13 years and i mean the technology's probably come on leaps and bounds since i left but i remember when they they started to develop um kevlar body armor you know so almost like stormtrooper stuff you know and before the body armor was fully developed someone had invented uh, a bullet that would go through the armor uh which are subsequently they're, they're supposedly banned and i they, they used to be called um i'm gonna say flechettes and they were like a steel dart and they got banned instantly because they said oh these things are lethal they just they're like a tungsten steel tiny dart that would just rip through anyone and anything you know but there was that battle between what's the best armor versus what can go through the armor it's the same with tank warfare where they they had belated armor so it would get hit by an explosive but the outer shell would explode outwards thus saving the undershell but then they developed double charges and then the triple charges you know what I mean so there was yeah. always this what what we refer to as the bullseye war if you can hit someone first harder and faster doesn't matter what they're in you know it doesn't matter how well equipped it is as long as you can destroy it um and that was always the uh the the development mindset was how do i destroy the next item that's going to be sent against me not how do i protect myself by making you know what i mean it, yeah it was, it was kind of backwards it was always someone's going to develop something and i need to destroy that and I don't know what it is, so I'm going to make the biggest, fastest thing I can get to go through whatever comes at me. So there's, there's two quotes. I'll, two quotes I'll give you on that. One is um, the best defense is a good offense. Yeah. And the second one was which is a line from Patton from World War II, and he goes, "The first rule of war has never ever changed, and that is deliver the maximum amount of firepower in the minimum amount of time." Yes. Here. And, and that's what we strive to do to the point where there's even stuff we can't use because we're afraid of the, um, you know, the, you know, the reason why you, the, the blowback, like we could use gas weapons, but gross, yes. you know, that doesn't go very well. And, and biologicals, there's dangerous things there that do. I think there's a, possibly a doomsday weapon out there. Eh, I don't know. I mean, Dr. Strange love was an interesting concept, but I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, my, my big worry, especially with the new, james bond film have you seen the new james bond film have you seen the new one yet i did i did i almost cried right. at the end <laughs> almost but oh. yeah I, I was so gutted for the little cuddly bunny rabbit i was really upset that that obviously got destroyed but the, the bunny the, rabbit the, yeah the, the little girl's toy she dropped it oh and then he right it, didn't he so she'll never see her favorite toy again that's that's you know, I, you know what thank you for pointing that out now i am upset <laughs> but the whole um genetically engineered kind of nanobots uh targeting oh, yeah 
Yeah, I mean that they're... that's that's scary stuff. And you yeah. can't tell me they haven't thought about that. And no, you no, can't no. They, they absolutely have thought of stuff like that. Of course. You know, the 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 stuff they're thinking of now is super, super tech based. You don't have you know, we we've done everything we can with fire and uh, yeah, <laughs> fire and, and big rocks, yeah. Yeah, big yeah, yeah. rocks. And yeah, it's really all you know, that tech really hasn't changed. I mean, it has we've refined it to the as far as we can. Now we're coming up with um de- kind of like designer drugs designer weapons which you can i mean really that's what if you were in a think tank it's like can we design a, a something that only would affect this particular genetic sequence you yeah. know whatever it was like brown people yeah, yeah. I think we can redheads blondes yeah. blue eyes whatever yeah 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 can we can we do that and that's, you know, that's what the bond movie was about so. yeah there was a there was a doctor who episode um where a, an alien race turn up and one quarter of the the, the the Earth's population just go into a trance and they all walk to places where they're going to kill themselves. And they basically say, if you don't give us this, we're going to kill Oh, yeah, these. I remember that one. And then, and then they narrow it down and it was blood groups. Can you remember that? It, they suddenly realized that it was everyone with like B positive or whatever. Yeah, and they went, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's no, what it Doctor Who, by the way, to end on a, on a, on a light note, I, I fell in love with, um, way, way before I went over to, to the UK, the whole Doctor Who thing with Christopher Eccleston, you know, during that one year that he did it. Yes. And it's like, holy smokes. And, you know, David Tenement and Matt Smith and, and all those guys. It was, and, and to, and I don't want to pick it, nothing against, um, wh- oh, what's her name again? The, the girl, Doctor Who. Oh, I don't know. I stopped watching. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Point. Well, I mean, I, I, it's like it all comes down to the writing. Everything when it comes to entertainment is all about the writing. Uh, that's what that that should be the core. It's not the actor. It's not the director. It's not cinematography. It's the writing. And yep. it was a crime that Doctor Who, you know, went into the whole woke thing because I mean, I was watching that season when when she first um, got on there, and it, you know, look, I, I love strong female characters. I do, but I realized I was binge watching that first season when she was on, and I'm falling asleep falling asleep yeah. and i'm going wait a minute and i caught myself it's like how am i nodding off it's freaking doctor who and i'm staring i'm just going okay i see what's happening here. so anyway love, yeah love no, it's, sad, it's sad. like you say if, if the story is no good then then yeah. that's just it's just bad so well thank you very much mark yeah no, um, thank, thank you and i'll say it was nice talking to you again um but we had some good times in that in the golf club i don't think that place would ever recover after <laughs> when all the staff were like seriously flat earth convention <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we're not we're not going away by any stretch by the way we, no. we just keep doing keep doing our thing and and more and more people get involved and uh, uh i love it we've got so and we i mean apart i mean our music is fantastic for for a kickoff um and we've got some incredibly qualified people that can't come like can't put their heads completely above the parapet because of their their right. work and stuff but they're doing lots of good work behind the scenes and and coming up with some fantastic um proofs ideas you know and anyone who who anyone who can't objectively look at it and still right. say well i don't believe it but i i see your point is just denying you know just reality yeah. aren't they really yeah but and, I, and I, and I, I get it you know the the, the, the it's looking looking at the whole flat earth thing it's great, you know. If you can't look at it and smile for a little while, then then it's something. Then you're probably heavy, heavy science based, and you've got something invested on the, on the other side which you don't want wrecked. You know, the only people yeah. that can get really, really angry are the are the heavy, heavy science people, and everybody else. You know, it, yeah, the, which is why you know we've grown w- the way we have, and you know we have such a high, high retention rate because once you get into it, you realize it's not like other conspiracies. It's it's light. It's it's got a, it's a message of hope in the end. So I love it. Yeah, because we don't have any angst, do we? We're, we're, we're no. fully inclusive. There's, you know, we're all shapes, sizes, colors, yeah, race, yeah, yeah. you know. And you, you see that one truth and every other boundary border is, I mean, we are. We're all over the, the plane, aren't we? So, yeah, absolutely. And, and we all, and, and when you said uh, on our last message, when you said you've got like extended family sometimes change your plans for you. And I thought, yeah, but I'm extended family. <laughs> that is true. Flat Earth, Flat Earth so, is a wonderful family, and you can tell that if you ever go to a meetup or a conference or, oh, or yeah. anything. I mean, the energy is just wonderful. I just spent um, 
uh, Friday with uh, Stephen Carpenter, Stephen Carpenter from the Death Zone. Yes, how is he? And, uh, he's wonderful. He is a real, it, just what you thought. I mean, an open-minded, you know, guitarist rock star who just loves what he does. And yeah, hell, he's more open-minded than me in some aspects. And he, he completely embraced the whole concept. And uh, it was it was just great hanging. We we talked shop for like eight hours, just talk, 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 talk. Oh wow. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Again, it's nothing, you know, the Deftones was a little after me. You know, I'm a little, he and I are about the same age, but he was one yeah. of those guys that, that, I mean, when I was listening to Judas Priest and Scorpions and, and you know, guys, Van Halen back in the day, he was one of those guys that took that music and then evolved it into the next generation in the 90s along yeah. with you know, tool and marilyn manson and and those guys so alternative metal very very edgy stuff but love love it so so glad that he's with us right okay then wrap this up i'm going to ask you one small favor and that is to give dotty a big hug from me when you see her because we share the same birthday so sometimes yeah i refer to her as my my twin sister though i think there's a few years between (laughs) <laughs> but, nice. but the same day the same day so that's uh so i always try and wish her a happy birthday when it comes around okay, okay. you'll see her before i do because i'm right. probably back to the states <laughs> <laughs> right thank you. Thank- no no th- thank you mark and I'll, I'll what i'll do is i'll i'll edit out probably the bit where the mics all went funny and this back bit and then uh and then i'll i'll send you the raw file if you want it and then you can do what you yeah, want yeah. with it happy, and then, happy to do it and, and send right. me send me a thumbnail if you want me to put a thumbnail on there or, right, I can, okay. or I can make my own. Your choice. You, uh, make your own. You can okay. do that. We'll just, or we'll I can just send... tell, tell me what to put on in terms of the title. Okay, I'll, I'll have a think about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ch- right. Thank. Thanks very much. Give All my right. best to everyone. See you soon. All right. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye.